My name is Tyler Barat, and water has been the lifeblood of my existence. From the streams of Montana where I grew up, into the rivers of the world, my goal has been one of constant adventure and exploration of the sport I love. I've climbed to the top of the sport of whitewater kayaking, claiming two world record waterfall descents and traveling endlessly from one adventure to the next. I was on top of the world until that fateful day when my world came crashing down around me. In a split second and over a hundred feet of free fall, I went from the top of one of the most extreme sports on the planet to a hospital bed, unable to walk. I laid in that hospital bed for over a week and underwent hours of back surgeries. I didn't know if I would ever kayak again. I had to remember the positive life I had lived up till that day. I had to remember what kayaking had taught me. I am a survivor, and no matter what in life, you're gonna take some hits. I had dreams of rebuilding, but no idea where to begin. I was healing at home in Missoula, Montana, when I spoke with my good friends, Eric Boomer and Sarah McNair Laundry to discuss what would be my greatest chance of recovery and exploration, a self-sustainable 30-day sea kayaking expedition to cross the Sea of Cortez. I left immediately. We all met in Los Angeles, California, and drove directly to Mexico. I volunteered my truck and began this journey all the way up in Montana, drove out to Portland and then took I-5 all the way down to LA where I met up with Eric and Sarah. I originally was coming from Baffin Island, northern Canada, where it's like minus 30, 35 every day and snowy and cold and left that behind for beaches and sunshine and sunburns. Well, at the beginning, we kind of looked at our route and figured out how much food and water we needed and then kind of figured out how much room we had left for clothes and tequila. How much room you got, Sarah? Zero, dude. I have shit strapped everywhere in this boat. Shit between my legs, under my seat. Well, uh, I'm leaving behind my, my home, my 94 Honda Accord with uh, pretty much everything I have. Heading down to the Sea of Cortez for 30 days to, to travel across it and uh, down the Baja Peninsula. Whew, starting out the trip right here. We're trying to make it to that island right way over there. It's about a 12 kilometer crossing and yeah man, we haven't, uh, we haven't tested our loads yet or these boats that much. So we're basically starting out into a headwind with about a 12 kilometer crossing. So definitely not the recommendable way to start an expedition, but um, I think we'll be fine. And worst case scenario, the wind's coming straight back uh, our direction. So if we can't make it, we'll uh, end up right back where we started. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> Tienen que levantarse primero La clave es escucharse y defenderse del veneno Canalizar la pena, rompiendo la frontera Saber dónde correr cuando suene la sirena Violenta, es la maldad en la tormenta Reprimen y sus máquinas se llevan nuestra selva Alerta, estén donde estén Solo déjense guiar si por la fuerza del bien Hay que salir a resistir Hay que guardar el aire, hay que entregarse a combatir y sin confiar en nadie Flashes, se escuchan tiros, la realidad está en las calles No existen libros, solo vampiros azules
Well, uh, today was a very successful day. We, um, we made our first crossing, which is great. We're standing on Isla, uh, what, are, what island? Tiburon. Yeah, Isla Tiburon. We're standing on Isla Tiburon right now. We did about 13 nautical miles from um, mainland. And uh, we can actually see Baja in the distance, which is sick. What did you feel like today? What happened? My emotions? Yeah. I felt happy. Sometimes tired, mostly happy. Now what? we're just looking at an even more exposed crossing to an even smaller island that hopefully has a beach on it. And we're just loving it. We're about to build a fire, cook up some sick food. All right, what's happening right now, Boomdog? Well, uh, we've been holding up in this awesome little cove and uh, holding out this Norte winds. It was really violent out there earlier today, and the seas are stirred up, and these waves are rolling in. The sets are getting bigger, and our small beach is just getting smaller. It's uh, another early morning. We've been waiting up here in the small cove camp for three days. Waves have been pounding and kind of located us into this small corner over here. What's the water looking like? Water looks good. There's a little bit of chop left, but... Oh, our water. Oh, water situation. Yeah, we're getting low. We're down to about two days of water. I'm more thirsty. Okay. The Sea of Cortez is a magical place. For over a month we wandered its waters and shorelines, blissful in our reality of vast emptiness, friendship, and simple subsistence. We crossed the Sea of Cortez then traced the coastline of Baja south, covering over 250 miles of open sea and coastline. I felt my eyes continuously wander towards the horizon. I stared for days at that thin line that represents the unknown the doorway to a world of infinite possibilities and endless adventures. Adventure builds dreams, and this trip was the fuel I needed to take my first decisive step forward. Just as the Triax had carried us across the Sea of Cortez, I needed to find a substantially suitable vessel for the journey ahead. Almost serendipitously, the end of the Triax expedition was the beginning of what will undoubtedly be the greatest journey of my life. Less than two weeks after we pulled the Triax up the beach for the last time, I found the boat that had evaded me for so long. My goal is now clear, to circle the planet on the wings of the wizard's eye.